Hi, everybody. Um, and thank you, Helen and um, Florence, for giving me this opportunity today. So this is uh, an NSF grant, uh, a rapid grant funded uh, through SATSI with my awesome colleagues, <clears throat> Nitru, Ming Zhao, and Visar Berisha. Ni and Ming are in computer science, and Visar is in the College of Health Solutions. Um, as the name suggests, we're going to be doing a lot of deep dive into machine learning and use that to do a more holistic contact tracing. Um, so there's actually three aspects to our work. Uh, we're trying to enhance existing contact tracing protocols by using both Bluetooth and GPS, and I'll dive into it in a moment. The big idea here is to say, can you ride or piggyback on um, surveys that are being done on campuses across the United States, particularly at ASU, we have a daily health survey we have to take. Can you use that kind of survey data, use it to both build a baseline risk model and then combine it with mobility and even phonation, which is a biomarker, just like the nasal thing, it turns out phonation is a biomarker for a whole bunch of respiratory and even mental health issues and, and combine that to build hotspot models and so on and so forth and continue to evaluate risk and put up a risk score. And our overarching goal in this work is actually to take this build system and deploy it into ASU's mobile app and that's an ongoing process. So very briefly on contact tracing, existing contact tracing apps basically use Bluetooth. There are these uh, tokens that are used. I don't have time to go into it, but they are vulnerable to security attacks. Um, they also, because do not because they do not use GPS, they are they cannot you uh, evaluate infected hotspot locations except through say cell towers and stuff like that. Um, so they're not really exploiting a lot of rich user specific data. And our goal in this project was to actually combine Bluetooth with GPS, which exists, but we've been able to build this protocol, test it on Android devices, and. Um, and provide strong privacy guarantees. And the other side effect is we can also now compute a histogram of infected hotspots using secure aggregation techniques at multiple of these servers, the back uh, end servers. Okay, so that's on the, um, the, on the contact tracing part. On the device part, our goal is actually to come up with a risk prediction model. And what are we going to do? We want to have a baseline risk that's based on your health symptoms one time, um, but daily symptoms will be used to continually assess this risk. You can use mobility patterns, especially on a university campus to figure out if there's an outbreak at every any dorm or any place, how can we you know, even move traffic around? And ultimately our goal is really to do phonation-based risk indices. And I will not have the time to talk about this in great detail, but the whole point is to breathe into, you know, use our app to just say an ah for you know, a few seconds and use that to look at both um, <clears throat> uh, respiratory, res respiratory health issues are directly correlated with how you phonate. And it's also correlated apparently with brain fog now. So there's a lot of our research here and Vishar, Vishar, my colleague and I are working on this. Okay, so I'm going to do a deep dive into only one thing in the interest of time, which is how do you do, how do you use surveys to predict um, risk? And we've been very lucky because thanks to this grant and a grant from uh, Google's AI for Social Good, we were able to get participate in a competition that Facebook hosted and get a data set from Facebook that CMU Delphi has been collecting for them through the Facebook app. And basically this is a survey, it's a daily survey and they've had 18 million responses um, with 53,000 participants. And the whole idea is to collect a whole bunch of symptoms-based survey, um, prior health conditions, social distancing, mental health, demographics. And of all that, there's only about 900,000 that are people who've taken the test. So that's the data we use because that's the label we use to predict um, how, whether somebody, well, you know, based on your symptoms, whether you may be at risk for COVID. Um, so what are we doing? You know, I'm diving a little bit deeper into what kind of models we're using. We're gonna use XGBoost because this is a kind of healthcare data set. It's got a mix of, um, you know, a discrete and continuous value data, but XGBoost is a fantastic, very well-known robust algorithm. What we're going to do is in fact, make it even more robust by using a whole class of loss functions that we've developed. And I'm happy to take that offline. Um, and in short, 
what we've been able to show is that even restricting ourselves to the top eight symptoms, and this is a very imbalanced data set, we have 86% negative, only 14% positive labels off the people who have taken the test. We can enhance um, you know, existing XG boost with even better things using our loss function. Even more interesting, what we've been able to do is to, in reality, the survey data is very noisy. We did a lot of pre-processing, but can you actually continually do this while the data is noisy? So we tested our, our algorithm against noisy labels where we flipped a bunch of labels, we kept it. We did two experiments, stratified and unstratified. We kept the imbalance and we have some very good results. So in the interest of time, again, I'm gonna stop it there and take it offline. Our holy, you know, the grail of this project, if I may, is to combine all these three things, put it on the ASU app and be able to give the user a survey risk and basically do a lot of backend data collection for ASU. So we're a little bit away from that, but we have an IRB approved. So we're hoping to put an app in and do stuff. So I'm going to stop right there. Thank you very much.